Hey guys, Zach King here with another motion tutorial today. And I'm gonna go over the camera. I'm gonna make it short and simple, and then this will kind of be an intro to what I'll do later with the camera, just to get you updated and know what I'm doing in the other tutorials. So I wanna get you guys up to speed here. I'm gonna drag a photo in here, um, me and the governor there. And let me just uh, remind you for putting in a photo or video, the lock, um, you see how I get to the center or somewhere on uh, the vertical or horizontal middle, it'll lock there. And you can control that. If you hit N, that stops and uh, it's, it'll let you put it wherever you want. But I'm going to have it in the middle this time. So press N, it'll snap there. And now I'm going to add a camera. So if you add a camera here, and you're in motion 3, I'm assuming, it's it gives you an option. You can keep it as 2D or switch to 3D. I'm going to switch it to 3D for this, this tutorial. Now, I want to open that project pane here. So click project or Apple 4, and this pops up. Now, when you do this, press Shift Z when you select in your canvas here. And that'll make it so you see the whole thing. If you're working at uh, 200 or 100%, 100%, you're going to be missing out these edges and you want to you know make sure you're looking at the entire project it could mess you up and you if you're editing and you think you're in the center but you're really not okay so in the project pane select your camera here and this is our photo layer i can name this uh, photo photo 1 if you have more than one and this is your group name you can call that something too but photo or uh, so grab the camera and now let's do a let's fly around here so this is actually the camera moving and not the photo. And as you can see, this rotation tool uh, moves just the camera. And it here, I'll prove it to you by coming up here or up to your uh, view mode. And you're going to click 3D grid. Now that puts a 3D grid everywhere. So you can actually see kind of like a floor, a virtual floor, where uh, your camera is and your picture in relation to the floor. So this helps. Uh, um, doing the camera movements and you can kind of measure stuff and see it easier and uh, this is very helpful especially if you have a lot of photos or a lot of video layers or whatever a lot of stuff going on you can know exactly where in 3d space that object is and so let's let's actually do uh, let's do a record a recording here so I'm gonna set my camera and my playhead in the middle or in the very beginning here very beginning down here of the timeline and I'm gonna push to this re record button it'll light up when you're recording and that's basically remembering all the keyframes that you do so I'm gonna like keyframing drag it to where I want it to stop and I can uh, pull in my camera and I'm gonna rotate it up here I'm just doing something random let's actually let's keep it yeah, let's actually spin around the photo. And move it kind of center it there. So final position will be right here. That's good enough right there. That's what I want. So let's let's watch that. I'm gonna turn the record off in case I mess something off. Um, Okay, so that's not that cool because the photo goes out for like a couple seconds here. So actually, I want to put another photo right here. So it's kind of looking at that. Let's come over here and let's put another the same photo. I'm going to use this button, and that's pushing that back into Z space. The red one is Z space. This is, you know, your Y, and this is your X. So pushing that back into Z space. I'm going to twist it just a little bit towards us. And so now, if I drag this to the beginning, so it's in the entire clip, we'll see what happens. So it's kind of focusing on that picture there as it goes by, and then there, and it, okay, so it lands, it's in. So that's basically the camera moves. You kind of need to play around with these yourself and actually see what they do, so you'll be able to uh, catch on to know 
what I'm doing as you follow along the future tutorials. Let's do something, let's add something else here though. I want to add an object. I want to come to my library, come to my, let's take a particle emitter, and let's say I want a sun. I'm not, I don't usually use all these because they're kind of lame, but uh, they work for this for our purposes here. Let's put this behind the photo. Just let's see what that does in the back. And now you can see it's actually not here. If I select it, you can see it's not in the beginning. So now it's in the beginning. Oh, I didn't make that 3D, did I? So you can actually make the object 3D, your particle emitter, which is pretty cool by doing this. And so actually, if you rotate around this thing, it is a ball. It's actually a sun, which is pretty cool. Um, that's the new f the new features in this is all your, in Motion 3, is that all your particles are 3D. So they're really cool. We're going to do a couple tutorials just on that because that in itself is is pretty intense. But, okay, so that's a simple, simple short tutorial on the camera. Uh, you kind of, you just need to play around with it yourself and figure it out, get used to it. And then in the future tutorials, I won't really be talking about the camera. I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing to produce certain looks and effects. So, play around. If, uh, select your camera here. Let me show you something else. Your HUD. If that's not on, get your HUD on there. And angle view. So, play around with this as well. This is actually changing it, uh, your millimeter. So regular film is 35 millimeter, which is what I usually uh, work at here. But I don't remember what the default is. It might be, it might be 35. But play around with the look that you want, uh, and it, it's it's cool, cool stuff you can do here. You have a lot of options. Um, I'm gonna do another tutorial later on lights. That's a whole nother thing. But you can start playing around with that now. And you know what? I'll see you guys later.